everyone to a hangover Christmas brew day. <laughs> and the hangover basically because of the reason that we did tried and tested all the good Christmas uh, beers yesterday. Yeah, we tested our way through quite a few beers. I'm really not sure how much of that content we can use even because we got a little bit tipsy doing that. Yeah, just a little. Uh, however, with that being said, the best one of all the ones we tried yesterday, in my opinion, was our own. Yes, sir. Spiced Christmas Brown Ale. So, I agree. if we can be even close to that one with today's brew, uh, it's just going to be amazing. And we're starting to, because we have to do molds in two separate types. Yep, um, we're brewing a really strong beer today. Um, and to do that we need to use a lot of malt, but we can't use all of the malt at the same time. Our brewing kit doesn't have that kind of capacity. So we're having to do something I've never done before, which is to split the first process of the brewing, the mashing, into two. So we have to mash the malt two times 60 minutes. Alright, we may get the a one polar time. beer killer. That's right. Uh, and what is a polar beer kilo? Well, that's basically <laughs> a, a beer that's over a certain percentage of alcohol. Uh, but to be more specific, what are we doing? Um, well, as you say, pol polar beer killer. That comes from My dad? your dad, who called strong beers polar beer killers. East Björn Stördare. In Swedish, yes. In Swedish. <laughs> uh, and normally they're like stouts. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're doing um, an imperial stout or Russian mm -hmm. imperial stout. And we're using... With Christmas notes. With Christmas notes, Obviously. that's right. Uh, I'll show you the ingredients later when we're putting yes. them into the boil. But we're using everything from sweetened cherries to apricots, raisins, cinnamon, the works. I think we've got something like six or seven additives going into the beer. Nice. So hopefully it'll be nice and spicy and fruit cakey actually. Nice. All right, Frederick. Uh... Our wort is done, the first batch uh, of wort. We're going to do this one more time. Uh, mash. Why are we doing it two times today? So we're doing it two times because we're using eight kilos of malt, which is a lot for our brewing system to handle. Okay. And uh, we, we need to split that into, into two times, otherwise we're going to get problems. The malt's going to get stuck and we're not going to extract the sugars we need. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, there won't be enough contact with, with malt versus water. So uh, We've mashed uh, half of our grains for 60 minutes. Mm. Um, about four kilos of six different malts. We'll get into the recipe a bit later. Uh, so what we're gonna do is now is we're gonna pull our mashing ton out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a third of this, uh, our wort, uh, from our tap here, and we're gonna pour that over the top of our grain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, about a third, and we're also going to take four liters of water, uh, hot water that's at 71 degrees, and pour that over the grain as well, just for one last final extraction of sugars from the malt. types of malt as I mentioned earlier. Our base is Maris Otter, that's our, our base malt. It's, it's um, a kind of bready mm -hmm. uh, 
malt, which gives us uh, a lot of sugar, uh, which will be alcohol later. And that's important because we're building a, a strong beer and a strong recipe. We're using roasted barley, and uh, it's going to give us um, some coffee and some chocolate. We're using Viking caramel malt. Um, uh, this will bring caramel. We're also using Belgium aroma malt. Uh, it says quite a lot about what that's gonna do. Um, and that was also like quite, we, we gave that a bit of a sniff earlier. That was kind of also a bit bready, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, also using chocolate malt. This is gonna make the beer dark, really dark. We're aiming for something called an SRM, uh, which is a way of um, uh, Knowing how dark the beer is, uh, either in SRM or EBC, uh, I can't remember actually what they stand for. But uh, we're going for 50. That's quite dark. If you pull the scale, you can Google it. Uh, you can see the different levels of SRM. Uh, 50 is very, very dark. Uh, we want it to be as dark as coal, as dark as the winter night. Um, but the chocolate malt will actually also give us a little bit of chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also using biscuit malt. It's the first time I'm using this malt. Um, and uh, we gave that a little bit of a smell also and it actually smells a lot like cookies mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that actually reminds me of a beer we tried a long long time ago called Cookie Stout mm -hmm. uh, from a brewery in Stockholm uh, called Pang Pang mm -hmm. and uh, that's a kind of nice flavor to have in these really strong stouts as well so we're having that and then we're adding another addition of uh, caramel malt, crystal malt uh, which will um, give us, a, again, a darker color and a bit more uh, caramel. Nice. Uh, that's it for the malt. And then we've got a load of uh, additives going into the boil along with hops. Uh, we're using uh, North Down hops, those hops that we used in our brown ale. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked really well. And um, that gives us a bit of pine, if I remember correctly. Uh, a bit of uh, winter spice. Or we're using Fuggles, which are a great bittering hop, uh, also from England. Um, quite uh, grassy and a little bit of uh, citrus. Mm -hmm. But that's actually going to marry really well with the sweetness of our beer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also using Chinook, which I think uh, brings a bit of uh, grapefruit a uh, little and also pine as well mm -hmm. uh, as far as our additives um they're in the box down there maybe when we add them to the boil we'll talk a bit more about that but we're throwing a lot of stuff into here we're also going to add some sugar as well uh for the yeast to eat later um 400 grams of that that will bump up the abv and hopefully we'll finish on 10.2 percent We would like to thank you so much for watching our content. We really put our hearts into making it, so it would mean the world to us if you hit that subscribe button as well as to tell the YouTube algorithm to show us to more people by commenting on our videos as well as to hit that bell button. Also, get involved in our community by joining our group Beer in Awesome Places on Facebook. Links in the description or post your own picture of a beer enjoyed in an awesome place. Also find our recipes on brewersfriend.com under Brew Day. All right, this is going to be really interesting. We normally take a reading of our words to find out uh, how much sugar we've managed to extract uh, mm -hmm. from from the malt. Um, but we're doing this extraction two times, um, so we're gonna take a sample of our first mash and uh, extraction and find out exactly what uh, percentage it will come out at. Alright, let's put our trusty hydrometer into our little glass tube here. Hopefully it will land somewhere around the 50 mark. This will tell us that our beer will land around 5% ABV, but we're doing one more mash, which should hopefully bring it up to uh, 100. Mm -hmm. But we're aiming for 50 now, so let's just add this and see where we, see where we get. Okay. Not so much. 
Um, so we've actually landed on 1060, which is amazing. Um, uh, if we do that again, then we're gonna bring easily out enough sugar and our beer might actually land somewhere around 11%, maybe even 12. Polar um, beer killer! Polar beer killer, but we'll see. We might add some <laughs> water and, and correct this, uh, right. dilute it a little to bring it back down to 10. We will see. Nice. Finally, uh, after another hour, we have uh, done our second mash. It is a thick mash, so it does take time to separate the watch. But if you can hear that lovely noise, mm -hmm. I don't think it should take too long. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna um, pour another four liters of 71 degrees Celsius water over our grain. And we're going to take about a third of the wort from the bottom, bottom of the kettle and, and pour that over too, to just get rid of the last bits of uh, powder, mm -hmm. protein flying around in our wort so we get a nice clean, clear mm -hmm. uh, beer to ferment nice. later. Check this out. We've got a nice boil going on right now. Hopefully we should be able to boil off about four liters. Mm -hmm. of uh, water, mm -hmm. work. Uh, let's add our hops. First hop addition, 20 grams of Chinook. That goes in now. And we actually in the last minute decided to do a 60 minute boil instead of a 90 minute boil as our mashing was so good and our efficiency was high. So we saved half an hour there. Okay, nice. Good news. All right, next top edition, 20 grams? What's 20 yes, grams, right? 20 grams. Buggles, uh, English hops. These are gonna be our aroma and uh, yeah, flavor hops in the boil. Yeah. And now we're actually also gonna add all of our additives, sort of things that hopefully make it taste like a Christmas cake. Mm -hmm. And what do we have for that? Well, uh, let's see. We've got cinnamon. Mm -hmm. We've got raisins. Mm -hmm. We've got dried apricots. Mm -hmm. We've got bourbon vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, cherries, sweet cherries. Mm -hmm. And dates. Cloves. Cloves and dates. And dates. Mm -hmm. All right, so it all so goes in now. And it's all gonna go into the boil now. In in the in the hop, in the hop spider, yeah. Yep. That's this thing here yes. that we're throwing our hops in. So we're gonna chuck everything in. Hopefully, they cook it all down um, and extract the flavors. At the same time, it will sanitize uh, all of the things that we're putting in. Mm -hmm. We don't want to add them at another time during the brewing process because it might put bacteria into our beer. Mm -hmm. and that's why we're putting it into the boil. Nice. <laughs> if you can see me behind the steam. Uh, we're gonna put in our last hop edition here. Mm -hmm. uh, with North Down. North Down. Uh, those fantastic hops that we managed to smuggle into the country. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. We won't. Uh, so we're gonna add these. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add uh, Protoflock, mm -hmm. uh, which will make our beer nice and clear, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna add uh, yeast nutrient, and um, we're gonna add some sugar as well. Mm -hmm.
Okie dokie, uh, now we just need to chill everything down as normal, as like last time. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got our wort chiller spiral here, so we're just sending water in from uh, the water source. It goes through the spiral and out the other side. And this should take about 20 minutes. Uh, at the same time, I'm just trying to drain the last few bits of flavor from all of the additives that we put in. Uh, that's gonna give us this Christmas uh, cake nice. uh, flavor. And once we're done with this, we're gonna add the yeast. Ooh, we're almost done, Frederick. We just need to add our yeast. And we're gonna use Y yeast, uh, London Ale 1028. It looks like it's gonna explode. Yeah, it's one of these smack packs. <laughs> uh, we used one last time. Uh, I gave it a good smack two days ago. Oh, so right. it's. Uh, like a, a starter in bread, so it's been... And it says um, Ria on it. It says Ria on it. Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which means sale. We sale, we got it cheap, uh, <laughs> basically, which is great. And here, here it is. Here's our beer. Here's our beer. We're just gonna pour in the yeast. It actually has a lovely smell uh, of kind of like gingerbread, but also like Christmas cake. Yeah. So, so but just based on the smell, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and uh, actually, to my satisfaction, uh, we got exactly 18 liters out, which mm -hmm. was what we were aiming to do according, uh, according to the recipe. Yes. So, good news, uh, we took a measurement as well, and shortly when uh, how strong the, the beer should turn out. Nice. So we just need to add the last bit of the yeast, uh, like so and put the lid on and give it a good stir to um, oxygenate the